Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel, GeoElmo Geocaching. In this third episode of my High Altitude Balloon Project series, we'll be talking about parachutes. If this is your first time joining me in this project series, then welcome. Above is a link to my High Altitude Balloon Project series intro video, which will catch you up on what I'm planning to do and how it relates to geocaching. In this episode, I'll be talking about the following. The role of the parachute in the High Altitude Balloon Project, the science behind how parachutes work, and how to choose a parachute for your high altitude balloon project. As always, there are links to informational articles I used in my research in the description section of this video. What is the role of the parachute in the high altitude balloon project? In short, after the balloon that is lifting the payload bursts at a high altitude, the role of the parachute is to safely return the payload to the earth. Let's dig into the science behind parachutes so we can understand how to choose the correct parachute for the project. How do parachutes work? The force that allows parachutes to work is called drag. Drag is a force that acts opposite to the relative motion of any object moving with respect to a surrounding fluid. In other words, if an object is moving one way in a fluid, drag is a force that acts in the opposite direction. In my previous video about balloons, I discussed how fluids can be liquids like water or gases like air. In the case of an object moving through air, drag is called air resistance. To understand drag a little better, let's take a look at its mathematical formula. Drag equals one half times air density times velocity squared times drag coefficient times area. For the high altitude balloon project, both coefficient of drag and air density are constants, meaning the variables that we need to look at are velocity and area. If you've ever driven in a car with your hand out the window, you've experienced drag. The faster the car is moving, which is the velocity factor, the more force you'll feel against your hand. In fact, since the velocity factor is squared, if you double the car's velocity, you'll feel four times the amount of drag force on your hand. To feel the effect of area on drag, if you hold your hand perpendicular to the ground while you're driving, you'll feel more force than if you hold your hand parallel to the ground. For a powered vehicle that moves horizontally, such as an airplane or a car, the designer of that vehicle works to minimize the coefficient of drag. The more drag on the vehicle, the more power is needed to overcome that drag, making it less fuel efficient, less environmentally friendly, and more costly to its owner. When an object is dropped in an atmosphere, there are two forces in play, weight and drag. In my discussion, I'll be assuming an object is dropped from a high altitude. Weight is a constant force that is the result of gravity acting on an object. This force will accelerate the object toward the Earth. Drag is the force that works in the opposite direction of gravity and will work to decelerate the object as it's falling. When an object is dropped and has no velocity, drag is zero, but as the velocity increases, drag will increase as well. But something interesting happens. Eventually, the increasing drag will match the weight of the object and the two forces will cancel each other, causing the object to fall at a constant velocity. This constant velocity is called terminal velocity. We can calculate an object's terminal velocity if we set weight equal to drag and rearrange the formula. Weight equals drag equals one half times air density times velocity squared times drag coefficient times area. Therefore, velocity equals the square root of two times weight over the air density times drag coefficient times area. Let's plug in some numbers for the example of a skydiver flying headfirst without a parachute and see what terminal velocity we calculate. We'll use mass equals 85 kilograms, which is around 185 pounds. Gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Air density equals 1.21 kilograms per meter cubed. Drag coefficient equals one. And surface area equals 0.18 meters squared. Solving the equation, we see that terminal velocity for the skydiver is 87 meters per second, which is 195 miles per hour or 313 kilometers per hour. That's really fast and dangerous for the skydiver. By changing to a spread eagle position, increasing their surface area, the skydiver can lower their terminal velocity. Again, using mass equals 85 kilograms, gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared, air density equals 1.21 kilograms per meters cubed, drag coefficient equals one, and surface area equals 0.7 meters squared. Solving the equation, we see that terminal velocity is 44 meters per second, which is 98 miles per hour or 158 kilometers per hour. 
by changing positions to increase their surface area relative to the ground, the skydiver is able to decrease their terminal velocity by about half. This is still really fast, which is why a parachute is needed, but you can see the effect of surface area on the skydiver's terminal velocity. In order to decrease an object's terminal velocity, we can decrease the object's weight, increase its drag coefficient, or increase its surface area. Parachutes are used to greatly increase the surface area. When a high altitude balloon bursts, the parachute is deployed right away. A bubble of pressurized air fills the parachute and keeps it open as the object descends to the ground. The payload system will continue to accelerate until it reaches its terminal velocity. For a high altitude balloon project, the desired terminal velocity is between 5 and 6 meters per second. A faster descent can result in damage to the payload and any people or objects on the ground, while a slower descent means more ground distance that's traveled. Now that we know how parachutes work, let's talk about choosing a parachute. Parachutes are sold by many companies and are specified by their diameter. When selecting a parachute, the manufacturer's website will list specific descent information for that particular parachute. Several I've seen show descent rate for different payload weights. I want to show you how to calculate the necessary parachute diameter yourself. It will help you to get started in choosing a parachute, and it's based on the science that we already discussed. The coefficient of drag of a parachute is based on its shape. For commonly used flat circular or flat hexagonal parachutes, the coefficient of drag is approximately 0.78. Rearranging the drag equals weight equation above, we can calculate the required diameter by first calculating the area. Area equals 2 times weight over air density times velocity squared times drag coefficient. Using an estimated weight with a flat circular parachute, mass equals 0.91 kilograms, which is around 2 pounds. Gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Air density equals 1.21 kilograms per meters cubed drag coefficient equals 0.78, and target terminal velocity equals 5.0 meters per second. We find that area equals 0.76 meters squared. Therefore, diameter, which is 2 times the square root of area over pi, is 0.98 meters. Plugging this back into the terminal velocity equation to double check using a 1 meter parachute, we get mass equals 0.91 kilograms. Gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Air density equals 1.21 kilograms per meters cubed. Drag coefficient equals 0.78. And surface area equals 0.785 meters squared. Therefore, terminal velocity equals 4.9 meters per second. This is close to the target terminal velocity. If we drop in size to a slightly smaller 3-foot diameter parachute, we use Mass equals 0.91 kilograms. Gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Air density equals 1.21 kilograms per meters cubed. Drag coefficient equals 0.78. And surface area equals 0.657 meters squared. We now calculate a terminal velocity of 5.3 meters per second, which is between our 5 and 6 meters per second target. As I don't know the weight of my payload yet, I will revisit this when I'm finalizing my design. That concludes the video about the parachute portion of the High Altitude Balloon Project. I hope you found it interesting. I really enjoyed learning about this subject. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos about this geocaching trackable to space project or about geocaching in general. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section of this video. Thank you for watching.